Okay, so what we have here is the, an actual dashboard. Uh, it's basically running through a, uh, a medical uh, network, and it's in our one of our remote labs. <clears throat> on the dashboard itself, the dashboard's customizable, so you can put whatever you want in there for information. You can have what we have up here. You can change and just by clicking and making a change to what type of information you want to display across. Again, this is for when the the IT personnel is looking at something, wanting to be able to look at something really quick and get a quick response. Um, for example, if they were to, somebody were to call in saying, I'm having an issue with uh, Office 365, they can come down and look at the response times really quick and say, okay, well, we see something and actually drill down deeper into that information. So across the board, what we're looking at is, basically it's telling you the engine health on top, how much disk, disk usage you're using today, what's your flow rate, <clears throat> the network response times and the applications response times. From there, we're showing the top ap applications, what are being heavily utilized at this point in time, uh, the application groups, then to the clients, and what clients are there and how many clients are there. Underneath there, we're looking at the application re response times, and then from there, the sites with the highest response times. So we're not only looking at the internal network, what's happening, but also your, your cloud environments. And the last part is the, uh, the site flows. So for example, if we wanted to say, well, well we want to know more information about an application response time. <clears throat> Sorry. You can click on. Let me go to this one. Yep. And it's not coming up. straight down through basically you can drill down into the information and find out on for this example all the network services that are happening what the delays are and these are set with thresholds so and they're customizable thresholds you can change it to what you want it to be or to the what we are what we set and the automatically alert as the threshold gets exceeded so if you're seeing a heavy usage, like for the example on the DNS, DNS, yeah, you would see that go into a red zone because it's exceeding. You can click down deeper into that information and then get levels of information about what's happening on that system. There we go. So at that point, as you click on the, you go down to the next level of information, as you get more deeper and deeper, you get more granularity. As you get the granularity, it's going to come up and tell you, here's what it sees, here's the information, basically who's being heavily hit. Um, you can click onto the lines. And at that point, we'll provide you more detail all the way down to the, where it's coming from, the users, the source address, including if you highlight your application information. We'll provide you more detailed, more metadata about what's happening with that flow itself. What's the ingestion time like on this? Uh, what do you mean by ingestion time? How so how long before, by the time the traffic actually happens to the time it's in the dashboard here? It's a couple of seconds. Um, it's pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. What if you have a distributed environment? Do you have multiple collectors? How does that, how's the architecture of that? Yeah, so if, if you have van links, uh, so just like this side, uh, multiple buildings, um, then you can just have one collector, one engine. But if you have, say, so in our case, we have a Bangalore office and we, you have RTP and, and Salem office, EMCHAR, then our recommendation is each office has their own engine. Otherwise, response time calculations will include the van. And is there a roll-up to a central? And then the, and the, the UI is our uh, central engine. Uh, and, and UI in the database is one engine, central engine. 
I can actually, I can jump to that right now. Yeah. So. What is this dashboard called? Like this whole product that you Extreme launched. Management Center, XMC, this whole dashboard that includes your analytics, uh, NAC, network management, uh, workflow composer, governance engine, all of these things are actually in the same application combined. Uh, depending on your licenses and how, what you have purchased, which application, some things are grayed out and some are not, but they are in the same UI. And if I, let's just say I'm doing wireless with Extreme and I click on wireless, can I do everything within there or do I need to log into a separate thing to do certain wireless functions? So, so just visibility? great question. So the wireless basically is the monitoring aspect. Uh, and then if you want to do configuration, um, say radio level or a site level, then you go into the ex uh, our controller, uh, Extreme Cloud Appliance, XCA, and within that, uh, and with the user experience is fairly sim uh, seamless, that uh, I'm telling you the behind the scene, but essentially you can launch that UI within this UI, and it'll launch the controller UI. Gotcha. So for the question you had before, you would see multiple engines here, depending on how many sites you're looking at. As you can see, we have two engines coming in. And that way there, the data gets caught, brought into the, to, to the uh, management center and then correlated there. And I can uh, drill down deeper into this. Everything I'm seeing here is IPv4. Is it feature parity with v6 in terms of reporting? and? Not yet. Not yet? OK. <laughs> Still working on it. So you can see uh, what we're looking at here is on the, for the app telemetry for the network response time and the application response time, this, these are the devices that we're using to grab that information. So that they're mirroring back their data to the system. The system's now displaying it itself. And if you go over to your application flows, here's all the data it's pulling up and putting onto the system. Yeah, so each for each uh, flow, for example, in this case, Google search engines, we, we constantly monitor about 50 parameters uh, for that flow, uh, the, who's the user behind it, who's the source and destination, uh, and the actual metadata that we see is within the application info, so that's basically drives our uh, fingerprint engine. Uh, so in case where the customer feels that, hey, this uh, identification is wrong, or it's just uh, shown as encrypted application, and I don't like, I want to, uh, we show the actual metadata, and then you can go into fingerprints, uh, and the detail of these fingerprints are also available, and you can create your own fingerprints. You can make, if so, the, they have their, their own applications, they're designing something else, they can create a custom fingerprint for it, plus the ones that we already, we already have in the system today, and adding in. Other thing is the packet capture very quickly. Um, as part of troubleshooting, especially the security use case, uh, we allow you to right mouse click, uh, start a packet capture. So there's no need to basically roll out a separate packet capture device and all of that. That's built into our application telemetry technology. And, and the, the user experience is very simple. All you have to figure out is, is, is my source IP or destination IP from where I need to do packet capture? for how many minutes, and that's about it. Uh, behind the scene, we'll push the right ACL to that uh, device, whether it's a wired or wireless, start the packet capture, and when you go into the packet capture, it stores on our disk. Uh, if you go into yeah, packet sure. capture, that PCAP file gets stored, and you can export it out and, and run your own uh, analytics on it. Are there different roles if uh, you can grant access to somebody read-only or limited yep. views? Yeah, like yep. yep. okay. absolutely. How about encrypted traffic, right? So there's a lot of detail in there that would typically not be visible. Yeah, so one thing is we don't need private keys on encrypted traffic. Um, so obviously if it's a banking application, you can't share those private keys. So uh, we essentially leverage uh, uh, the information that's coming in the packet in the early uh, handshakes and especially from the uh, digital cert. So, you, so you're using the cert to help yeah. fingerprint Correct. what that traffic yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, <laughs> there, there in, within the reports, all the, so what you saw is all the real-time information, anything historical is within the reports. Uh, we allow you to create uh, your own custom reports. There's a uh, reporting uh, uh, engine there, and, and there are a lot of uh, built-in reports also there. And you can, uh, you can schedule the reports. You can get daily, weekly, monthly reports. Um, the alarms and syslogs uh, are also built in. So if you create thresholds, uh, we will show up within the alarms and events. Within the, uh, the governance section where it does the automated uh, policies and things, can you create your own policies for your yep. own corporate environment? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And given you have the single database, if you see an anomaly here, does it do any correlation back to any changes that were made in the environment? We'll cover that in the next section, the security <laughs> that's, that's aspect. Coming up. <laughs> I don't want to steal his thunder, but yes. So this is actually a, a live cloud. Instead of the slide they had before, this is actually the private cloud. Um, it's talking to AWS and Google Cloud Compute right now and ga gathering that data. There's a ton, not a ton of information there, um, but it's actually pulling that, that information and talking, knowing what the VMs that are, or the, what's spun up over there, and what the IPs are. Yeah, so these are real instances uh, within AWS and Google Compute that are running by our IT and uh, software developers. Any other questions before we move to the security section? I was curious about the UI. Some of the, the vendors I work with have like seven single panes of glass. And you mentioned that if you click on something, it pops out another interface. Is there any consistency between the UIs? Like, are you able to click wireless in this demo? I'm just curious to see what it looks like. Sure, it's, sure, yeah. You know, consistent or... Not a lot here in this one, but... But if you click on something that actually pops up that window to the controller, does the UI look similar to Extreme Management Center, or is it a separate UI entirely? It'll be similar, uh, but I wouldn't promise it is exactly the same. That's that's what one area because it, it, we are going directly into the controller, uh, but uh, definitely the elements, uh, number of controllers, APs, clients, uh, all that data, the representation of that data is very very similar. Gotcha. Um, the idea is your day-to-day -day monitoring. You stay in this UI, but whenever you're do, doing any changes, config management, you go into the controller. Gotcha.